Okay, so we left off looking at the um, metabolism of muscle. We talked about the different types of fibers, fast fibers versus slow fibers. And then we talked about the different sources of energy um, from the different muscles. So the first name was the speed, and the second name was its main source of oxygen or main source of ATP supply. So based on that, there are three types of skeletal muscles. We have slow oxidative fibers, which are not only slow in the speed of contraction, but their main source of ATP production is oxidative phosphorylation. Then we have fast glycolytic fibers. So that's gonna be the other end of the spectrum. These fibers are fast in their speed and their main source of ATP is glycolytic uh, or anaerobic glycolysis. Now, fast oxidative fibers, which are in the middle here, these are intermediate. So they are fast in their speed, but also their main source of ATP is oxidative phosphorylation. So they are not as slow as slow oxidative fibers, and they're not as fast as fast glycolytic fibers. They're kind of somewhere in the middle. Okay, so if you think about slow oxidative fibers and kind of make the connection of the speed, which is the first name, and the second name, oxidative, being the main source of ATP. Having said that, let's think about the features of slow oxidative fibers. They're gonna have low myosin ATPase activity. Another way to say that is that they're slow in the weight of contraction and relaxation. Um, they're gonna have a high oxidative capacity meaning that they have a ready supply of oxygen, so they are aerobic, so they are going to have a lot of mitochondria, a lot of rich capillaries and blood supply to bring that oxygen in, a lot of myoglobin, which is the, uh, uh, the, um, the storage of uh, the um, hemoglobin in muscle, which is a source of that uh, oxygen as well, and then it's going to have a small diameter. So the small fiber diameter means that it's gonna provide a, a small amount of tension and it's gonna have a small diffusion barrier. It's gonna be a smaller barrier for that oxygen to diffuse from the capillaries into the muscle itself. Lastly, they're gonna fatigue slowly. So they're gonna be able to contract for longer periods of time. Again, because they are aerobic and because they have a steady supply of oxygen and they're gonna supply a lot more ATP. For fast glycolytic fibers, again, way on the other end of the spectrum, these fibers are fast in their speed and their main ATP source is anaerobic glycolysis. So if we think about that, they're gonna have high myosin ATPase activity, meaning that they have a fast rate of contraction. They're gonna have high glycolytic capacity. And in order for that to be true, that means that they have to have a lot of glycogen stores to be a substrate for that glycolysis and a lot of glycolytic enzymes to actually carry out these enzymatic reactions of glycolysis. They're gonna have no myoglobin, that's why they appear white or they don't stay red, and they're gonna have a large diameter, meaning that they're gonna have a lot of tension produced, a lot of force produced, because they have a lot of myofibrils, which means a lot of phosphorus cycling. Lastly, the sort of price to pay is that they will fatigue rapidly because of the glycolysis, because this is anaerobic, and because lactic acid will build up as a byproduct of that anaerobic glycolysis. So they will fatigue more rapidly, and they will not be able to sustain contractions for as long. Now, in the middle is the fast oxidative fibers. These are an intermediate of both of the two that we described. So they're going to have an intermediate weight of contraction. They're going to have high oxidative capacity because they are oxidative, which means that they will be uh, having uh, more myoglobin and more mitochondria, not as much as slow oxidative. Again, so sort of in, the, in between, in the middle of the two fibers we just described. They're going to be slow to fatigue but more rapid than slow oxidative fibers. And so again, thinking about the fatigue, fast glycolytic fibers have the highest rate of fatigue, slow oxidative fibers have the lowest rate of fatigue. And so fast oxidative fibers in the middle are going to fatigue in between the range of those two fibers. And then the diameter is also going to be intermediate, not as big as fast glycolytic, and not as small as slow oxidative. All right. Here's a nice summary table just to compare the three. Um, so think about the 
oxidative capacity, glycolytic capacity. You want to think about their speed of contraction, whether they are fast or slow, and that will lead you to connect their myoglobin content, their resistance to fatigue, um, and the amount of force they generate, et cetera. So here's a nice study table to compare. Okay, now when we think about the three different types of muscle fibers, we want to think about muscles as being a blend of all fiber types. So there's no muscle that is exclusively one fiber type or the other. The proportions are going to vary depending on your, your function. So on um, the example that we left off last time, we were talking about things like postural muscles and you know instances like long distance runners they're gonna have muscles that are more conditioned for slow oxidation or for oxidative phosphorylation. So they're gonna have more of a, a large proportion of slow oxidative fibers in their muscles, which is why their muscles appear more lean and smaller in diameter versus a bodybuilder, which will have more of a proportion of those muscles conditioned to be glycolytic. So muscles are mixed and there's more or less proportion depending on the conditioning of the muscle. Now, when you think about a motor unit, a motor unit being a single motor neuron and all the fibers that it will innervate, all the fibers in a motor unit must be of the same type. So while within a large muscle, we can have many different fiber types, the fibers that are attached to a single motor neuron must all be of the same fiber type. And then connecting this to recruitment, recruitment is gonna happen on the basis of small than large, right? That, the, that size principle that we described before. So following that principle, slow oxidative fibers will get recruited first, fast oxidative fibers being that intermediate will get recruited second, and then fast glycolytic fibers, which are our biggest fibers and um, the fastest fibers, will get recruited last. So the size principle will also apply to the order in which we recruit, um, you know, based upon the, the, the type of muscle fiber as well. 